of the slope like it's a roof. Um, we've got a storage tank, it's an old hot water heater system, so we can pump through that. We're just pumping at about 2 litres a minute overnight, whenever the output temperature of the radiator is cooler than the tank temperature, we'll start pumping and it switches off, goes automatically. Then I've put in two insulated boxes, about this sort of size, with a bit of thermal mass in it. They've got about two litres of water in internally, because I've got a small radiator in one and a fan so I can maintain the temperature, which is this green one. And the other one's just another box, which is exactly the same, same thermal mass inside, and so I can compare what happens through the day to see if I can maintain the temperature cold. So this is for four or five nights. You'll see the ambient temperature is the purple one here. So we're peaking up around 22 degrees, getting down to say 13 degrees. This red one is the water, the cold water that we're storing in the tank just by doing the nighttime radiation. So this has a convection cover over the top. So you'll see down here, you've got, you're getting water down to about 8 degrees here when the nighttime ambient was up at 12 and a half. So you're significantly cooler there. When you compare it to the daytime temperature, you're a lot cooler. So you can pump that in through a, through a room, maintain the temperature easily. Obviously, as you scale this up to building size, you need to have a lot bigger collectors and a lot larger storage tank. <coughs> so there's multiple approaches you can do to what, what you want to do. If you want to do a quick, widespread application everywhere to try and get a nice, fast payback time, high reflectance, high emittance paints. They, if you're just doing the cost of the paints straight up, they've got a payback of about two to three years. The premium on top of a normal paint is not very much, it's a couple of dollars a square metre, so that if most commercial roofs are repainted every 10 to 15 years anyway, if people repaint with a high reflectance paint instead of a standard paint, the payback time goes down to a matter of months because the, you're talking a dollar out of $18. Um, for the stored cool systems, the most practical systems are going to require a high coating because there'll be times when you're quite close to ambient or you might even be above ambient because you've had a large thermal, thermal load and you need to cool that water down. So in order to be able to pump out as much heat as possible, for buildings you're going to need high heat. But you can have specialised things where if you have, if you want to be able to maintain a, a small room for at a lower temperature that doesn't require a high thermal load and you want to get significantly below ambient temperature, that's when your selective coatings are going to come into play. You need to look at covers to minimise convective gain. There's, people have looked at ways of mainly using very thin polymers. Problem with that, they're not outdoor stable very long because they break. So we've been looking at ways to get around that, which I won't talk about today, but we'll publish something on it very soon. Um, so I've just talked about the heat load thing. Because we're using the PVC collectors, you can, if you have a, two tanks, you can store heat during the day and cold at night and utilise both of those for maintaining temperature in the building exactly how you like, or because you've got hot and cold, you can use that temperature differential to generate heat, or generate electricity, but you're obviously going to have a lot more heat generated than you will cold. <coughs> this is just um, some examples of setups people have done around the world. Um, this one's in Cedar Mountains um, in the US. They've done the same similar thing here. They've used a pool collector They've not worried about doing any convective covers to block it off, so they're going to be limited quite significantly on how cold they can get because the wind's going to blow past and heat it up. But this is a company which is installing these sort of setups on people's houses and it works for them. <coughs> if you've got the cold water stored, the easiest way to cool a building, and this is going in, people have done hydronic heating in Europe for years people are now starting to look at you doing hydronic cooling. So with heating you want to have it down the bottom, with cooling you want to have it at the top. If you've got multi-storey buildings, if you have a concrete slab, a suspended slab, you can have a setup like this where you've got 
your cooling pipes in but through the concrete so that's cooled, you've got a thermal mass inside, you can maintain room temperatures really well and easily. Alternatively to doing a slab, you can get, they're called chill beams, and basically, they basically replace one of these foam panels that looks like a light fitting, but it's cold, you have water pumping through it. A lot of the new buildings which are getting high star ratings are using that sort of thing, but they're using mostly air conditioners at night to cool this water <laughs> and then pumping it through. Some places are doing night cooling where they spray onto the roof. Like this one here is um, a TAFE in Victoria that's been built. Um, you can see here they're spraying water onto the roof at night, so that's going to be their high emittance coating is the water. That's re-collected through their stormwater system and stored in a tank down here. This tank was a 130,000 litres and they're cooling that down overnight. That's then being pumped through these chilled floors and that maintains the building. So their energy can... They've also got boosters on the cold water so that if they've got a bad time of the year when it's not, where there's too many clouds, they can boost it and maintain the cold in the building. And they've cut down their air conditioning by 68% by just applying that. If you were to apply a cover over the top of their spray system, you could improve it even more because you're, the water you're going to be getting through is going to be colder. But it's a great start. Um, we were actually talking to the guys who were designing this about a week ago, and they said they've now put in about seven buildings in Victoria that have night sky cooling incorporated in it. So it's starting to take hold, but hopefully a lot more companies see that it's a viable thing to do. Um, so this is our conclusion, and this is Jeff Slade. So. Um, it's not widely understood, so because it's not particularly understood, it's been ignored a lot. It's quite low cost. If, you compare, if you're putting a new building and you can choose whether you want to go for a black roof, a grey roof, or a white roof, why would you choose a black roof when obviously it's going to cost you more in the long run? And hopefully people start to see that, but they people don't necessarily see that. Um, at this same meeting we were at, we were talking about things you can do to improve the uptake of renewable energy. And the people at the group were saying that a lot of people don't install solar panels because they don't like the look of them on the building. So it comes back to the education thing that Ari was talking about. If we can convince people that they look good, people will take them up. It's not the technological thing. You just have to educate people and it will happen. And thank you. Um, I, I would have thought it would be pretty high, yeah. but because they're collecting rainwater back into the system, it'll make up anyway. Um, because most places have a pretty good rainfall. Um, with that TAFE one, they were using all the water, also gets used for their toilets and all everything, so they're, they're using that. So, they, so they're, they're using it as a double system. So, yeah. The, Using the covers on it will also help with a lot of water loss. Yeah, yeah. Um, with um, <coughs> annual variations in temperature and say <coughs> a standard house as an example, though you could extend it, ask the question for the bigger buildings. Um, what's the kind of volume um, that we could store to have um, both in heat and cool um, to have ultimate control of the temperature? Uh, you know, so for example, I've actually got a project yeah. that I'm working on which tends to have 23,000 litres of cold and 23,000 litres of hot. 